Hey, what's going on everyone? In today's video, we're just gonna do a quick little update on our recommended workflow for retargeting to characters in Unreal Engine 5.4. There's a bunch of really awesome new tools. It's really easy to do retargeting now. And we've added some things in Rococo Studio that make it a little bit easier. So without further ado, let's jump into it. First, I just want to address that we have a lot of tutorials on our YouTube channel and some of them seem outdated. You know, they're using old versions of Unreal and workflows that we don't really recommend anymore. And that's because there's lots of people who have not made the transition to UE 5.4 or higher yet. And, and the tools that we're gonna be using in this video only work in Unreal Engine 5.4 or higher. So if you are working in a previous version of Unreal, or if you're looking at this and you can't make it work, then I have linked to a bunch of those videos down below and they should have everything that you need to get going. So the first thing that we did is I just went and recorded a take using my SmartSuit Pro 2, Smart Gloves, and some face capture because we're gonna be covering face capture as well in this, uh, in this tutorial. Although you don't need to use this workflow with face capture. So everything looks good. I went through and always make sure to do your little foot cleanups. You know, I had some wonkiness on the kick, just had to adjust a keyframe really quickly, um, you know, which you can just drag and, and fix those foot contacts uh, if you have any issues. And at this point we can export out for Unreal Engine. I will rename my clip. Let's call this UE5 demo. And if I'm in the clip, double click, you can see we go automatically to the export button here. Um, and for Unreal Engine 5, what we can do is select the new preset for Unreal Engine 5. Now you don't have to do that. You can go to default and then you could select UE4 mannequin or the UE5 mannequin or even a Mixamo skeleton. A Mixamo skeleton uh, would also work with this. But if you do select something other than the preset, then you wanna make sure that meshes is turned on. You need a mesh to import into Unreal Engine. However, in my case, I am gonna use the UE5 default and everything looks good. I'm just gonna change my frame rate to 24, although you can of course keep it at 30. I will just save out my mocap to the right folder and then we'll hit export. Okay, so here we are in a brand new Unreal 5.4 or higher project. Uh, it's just nice and clean. And the first thing I wanna do is just create a new folder for our mocap. There we go. And then next, before we import our mocap, I am going to hit add and add feature or starter pack. And that's because we need to have the Unreal 5 mannequin in our project before we import our mocap. So I'm gonna select this third person template, comes with a mannequin. This is just what I do. If you have another way of getting the mannequin, be my guest, but this is how I grab it. There we go, load it in. And you can see if we go to characters, it gives us the UE4 and UE5 mannequins. So that all looks great. At this point, we can load in our motion capture. So we'll go to our mocap folder, hit add, import, go find our mocap UE5 demo, UE5 right here, and we'll hit open. And when this dialog comes up, we are going to do a few things. We're gonna uncheck import mesh. Um, then we are going to select the Unreal 5 mannequin. If you're doing this process with a UE4 mannequin export from Rococo Studio, you would select the UE4 mannequin, which makes sense, right? So select the UE5 mannequin, hit import all. <gasps> and look at this. We've got our motion capture in our scene. Looks great. And although there is no face, on this mannequin, as you can tell, we do have all the AR kit blend shapes. They are in this animation. And you can see them right here. You can actually select these and copy them to other animations if you want. But in this case, we're going to be putting this whole thing on a character. So this looks great. Now I have grabbed a character from the Epic Marketplace. Um, this character is equipped with facial blend shapes. So let's open up this character and check them out. Looking cool. And you can see that the character has facial blend shapes in the mesh tab here. You'll see the AR kit blend shapes right here. And importantly, even if your character has AR kit blend shapes, but they aren't named with the standard nomenclature, which you can find right here, or is, is also in our motion capture asset, 
we go open that up again, you can see these are all the actual AR kit names. These need to match your characters for this all to work automatically. A lot of times they will, but sometimes they don't, and you're gonna have to figure out a way to rename those blend shapes. But anyway, this character is ready to go. So we're ready to retarget. And at this point, all we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on our motion capture. We're gonna go to retarget animations. Then under target skeletal mesh, we're gonna go and find the skeletal mesh that we want to retarget to this mercenary warrior without helmet. And you can see we get a little preview, although the light is always a little funny. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna find the UE5 demo. Oop. Double click it. And we can see that everything looks good. So we're gonna hit export animations. And I like to put it into the mocap folder and hit export. And there we go. Now this fold, this, this window won't actually disappear. And what you can do now, if you want, is also export the retarget assets. So let's do that as well. I'll put that in the mercenary warrior folder instead. And now we'll close this out. And if we go back to our mocap folder, <gasps> look at this, we've got our animation on our character. All looks correct. But we also exported out those assets, those retargeting assets, and this automatically generated IK rigs for our motion capture and for our character and an IK retargeter. So you can see if we open this up and we offset the mesh so we can actually see what's going on here. In here, we can do a whole bunch of other things and I'm not gonna cover everything in here, but we can change, you know, FK to IK. We can um, do, if you have hip issues, sometimes you wanna come in here and go to global settings and um, maybe change some of the, uh, or the root settings, you can blend them to the source and sometimes that'll fix hip issues. Point being, the, with these assets, you have a lot more control. Um, you can also do things like, maybe you want to do some preliminary mocap editing. You can go up to edit retarget pose, and then I could change some of the poses um, for my character. So that can fix things like if you have a character that's really you know, wide or something and you're getting arm clipping, maybe you do some of that in here instead of doing it in sequencer, which is what we're about to do right now. So I'm gonna hit save. And at this point, let's create a level sequence and let's, you know, get our mocap on our character in our actual scene. So I'll create a level sequence, call it UE5 demo. And we actually need to add our character to the scene. So let's go find our character. SK warrior mesh without helmet. Control L to change the light a little bit here. Go back to our sequencer. We will grab our warrior. And then under animation, we will go find that UE5 demo. <gasps> and look at this. It's all working. If I double click on the animation, it will make my timeline fit the animation length, increase the out point, and here we go. We've got our animation on our character and everything looks really good. So now at this point, if we wanted to do a little mocap editing, um, there's a couple different ways that we can do that. We used to right click <clears throat> and bake to control rig, but we don't need to do that anymore. There's a more non-destructive way to do that. So for example, let's say we wanted to fix these thumbs. What we could do is just go to plus control rig layered and then control rig classes FK control rig. Now this is gonna add a layer, but it's not actually gonna bake anything. But that being said, now we can select our bones. And what I also like to do is go up to my editor preferences and turn on my arc ball rotator so that I can just grab the ball. And now we can grab this thumb bone and we can rotate it into the right spot. And we can do the same thing with our other hand Sometimes with characters, oftentimes you need to change the thumbs a little bit and that change is gonna be persistent throughout the entire animation. Now we can also, of course, keyframe this, right? Select the thumb, add a keyframe, or let's, let's do that for the head instead. Let's go grab the head right here. 
And let's say we wanted to have the head do a little look at a keyframe, go back, right click, copy, paste. And now our character, you know, did a little, did a little move. So that is how you would use an FK control rig. Now the real golden goose in mocap editing is a IK control rig. And I'm not gonna go through that process in this video, but you can check out the videos that are linked down below where we go through modular control rigs and how they work. Um, with MetaHumans, for instance, there's a control rig actually given to you when you download your MetaHuman into the scene. So in that case, what you would do is instead of selecting this FK control rig, which is always going to be present with any skeletal mesh, uh, you would go to plus control rig and you would just select the metahuman control rig and it would add that non-destructive layer. And you can do the same thing with facial animation um, or anything else. I've also added a link to our Rococo resources folder down in the description below. This is a great folder. It has image masks for isolating the metahuman head. It's got our UE4 skeleton modular control rig, which was made by Alberto Flores, uh, one of our incredible Discord moderators. Really useful for doing IK motion capture editing on your characters. And of course, I've also put links to our other tutorials down there as well. There's a chance that we might not have covered everything that you need in this one, but if you go check out the other ones, you should be good to go. And you can also join me live most Thursdays at 11 a.m. PST, um, where we go through this stuff and we're playing with Unreal a lot these days. So hopefully this was helpful. This is just a quick video to get everyone up to speed on the new workflow in UE 5.4. And I expect these tools are only gonna keep getting better. Okay, we'll see you in the next one.